Tonight we're going to talk about police accountability and who gets to decide the punishment if an officer breaks the rules. That is always a hot topic and it's our big story tonight. Portland's police union wants voters to take another look at a law that they passed three and a half years ago. It dealt with police accountability. Now, that's often an emotional topic in Portland, especially. The union thinks the law, which would take effect in 2025 at some time, is biased against the police department. The union is preparing to float its own version of a new accountability plan using the initiative system. Now, advocates who support the current one that's going to take place well, they say that law is just fine, and of course the police don't like it. That's mainly because the law would allow the accountability board to impose corrective action or discipline directly if they find an officer violated the policy. That is a big part of the issue. You're going to hear a lot about that. The citizens would have the final say under the current voted in and going to take place system. We're going to hear from both sides. First, let's take a look at what voters passed. In November of 2020, five months after the murder of George Floyd, as the social justice protests rocked Portland, voters approved with an astounding 82% yes vote the creation of a new independent police accountability and oversight board for Portland police. Now that led to the creation of a committee to set the thing up. The committee spent several months researching and hammering out a new system for police accountability. Now that first committee was made up of 20 people and there were requirements on who could be on the committee. It had to be five people who were members of an over-policed community, five from organizations that provide support to those over-policed communities, five who represent community justice organizations, and five who represented small business. The group created the new police accountability structure for Portland. And then that accountability structure, the program as it is now, began with its own board. It has 33 members and five alternatives. Their terms last three years. Again, there are requirements about who could be on that. Proposed City Code 2-1002 states board members appointed by City Council. The board shall ensure a diverse membership, particularly of community members who have experienced systemic racism and those who have experienced mental illness, addiction, or alcoholism. Also to be a member, you had to live, work, play, attend school, or worship within the city of Portland for 12 months before being appointed. And while the proposed board is volunteer, each member would be paid hourly for their time, an average of about $5,300 a year, they expect. Organizers stated that that is to help reduce the barriers for volunteering, since some people would not be able to afford it otherwise. They will also get free mental health care if needed to help with reviewing potentially traumatic and emotional videos, reports, and records. And while we're talking about membership of the new Police Accountability Board, 2-1003 notes that people currently or formerly employed by a law enforcement agency are ineligible, so not eligible for service. And 2-1004, budget will be proportional to 5% of PPB annual budget. The board will hire a director who will run the organization. And the new board will make the decisions about whether officers violated the policy. And again, as I mentioned earlier, this is a big difference than a lot of places. They will impose corrective action or discipline if appropriate directly. Okay, so that's just a little slice of the new accountability board for the city of Portland. Again, it would start doing its thing in the year 2025. The report setting up that new accountability system runs 505 pages. So yes, we did leave some of it out now. As you might expect, the police union does not love this final product. They argue the board is stacked against them and that the board should not be able to make the final discipline decisions, that they should instead send those decisions to the chief of police. Aaron Schmautz is the police union leader. The real concern we have is in the structure. When you, again, when you have baked into the cake, we want to find people who have historical distrust of law enforcement and have them be the arbiter. It's going to lead to more debate. Um, as opposed to just having a fully robust civilian oversight panel that then is provides uh, an outcome of an, of an investigation to the chief, the chief who is responsive to the elected officials, uh, who has experience in law enforcement, understands the laws and the rules and the regulations, uh, makes that decision. Because again, the city is who is responsible for navigating discipline and firing people. All right, well, I took his argument to someone who spent a year on the committee that helped set this up, this new system. Jason Renaud works in the mental health field. Well, the Portland Police Association's proposal is not a national best practice. It includes police officers both as judge and jury, and that doesn't provide the accountability the community wants. 
Although, what about their argument that uh, the board has been stacked against them, that it's full of people that don't like police? That's the point of the Police Accountability Board is to bring citizens, community members who are impartial, who are independent, who are knowledgeable to make those decisions about misconduct. Next, I took that same question to the ACLU's executive director, Sandy Chung. No surprise, her group is suing to stop the police union proposals from even reaching the ballot. I could hear the police. In fact, I did hear the police union saying uh, that it's unfair to them if the oversight committee is loaded up with people who don't like the police. So is it possible there could be sort of a reverse discrimination uh, in terms of the committee membership? Well, Pat, this is a thing. This is an accountability board that doesn't make decisions in a vacuum. They're literally tasked with receiving complaints, engaging in the processes to receive full information and make determinations as a body about what happened, right? So in some ways, it's similar to a jury in the ways that a jury receives information during a court proceeding and then decides as a group what happened. So, you know, I would say that these, um, yeah, these concerns are not warranted. I checked on police accountability boards, by the way, for the city of Seattle and Tacoma and New York and San Francisco. It was interesting, none of them have the power to enforce discipline themselves. They always, all of them, recommend it to a police chief or to a police commission that oversees police. The police union will try to get two initiatives before voters this fall. One that we've been telling you about to change the way the accountability board operates and have them recommend officer discipline to the chief instead of being able to impose it themselves. The other would require the city to increase and maintain the number of sworn police officers in patrol services. Also create and maintain 24 hour drug detox drop off and treatment centers and increase and maintain street response services. The ACLU opposes both initiatives and is arguing this second initiative violates Oregon's constitution, which does require that when putting an initiative up for a vote, it must be about one thing, not many. Executive Director Sandy Chung says the initiatives are basically a police union power play. The problem is the city of Portland has utterly failed to keep Portland police accountable when they break a rule, when they break the law or harm or kill people. So this is why 82% of voters voted for the creation of this oversight board and made sure that it had all of the necessary things, all of the things stated by experts that are needed for it to be effective. And we believe what we've asked for in our legal challenge is simply that the court make sure that the title for the ballot measure is, is as accurate as possible, because we believe if the title is accurate, Portland voters will reject this measure Schmautz from the police union sees it differently. A lot of people in our community have felt that they have not been able to speak to their concern, to what they want, how they want to be served by law enforcement, um, because there's just a handful of voices that tend to drown out um, the majority of Portlanders. Um, and again, this ballot measure was high level, just do you want a citizen run accountability measure? There wasn't a lot of discussion about what currently existed. All right, well, now it's your turn to weigh in. Do you think the accountability board needs to be changed or stay the way that it's going to be? Anything else stick out to you? Let us know, will you? Send us an email. The address is thestory at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail. The number is 503-226-5090.